So welcome to our Art Path Artist Talk. Um, I appreciate y'all coming out. I'm Michelle Carlson, the Education Director. Um, if you don't know, the Lansing Art Gallery and Education Center is a nonprofit organization and has been a staple in the Lansing community for over 50 years. Um, and we've been a leader in the community of public art. And this public art path is in its fourth year. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, it's a result of the hard work and founder of Katrina Daniels, our exhibitions and gallery sales director, and Emily Stevens of the City of Lansing's Park and Recre Recreation. Um, we'd like to welcome our artist tonight who will be talking to you, Sinclair Chase Corte. <laughs> and before I go, I'd like to also remind you that we have one more artist talk at the end of the month and we'll have an art adventure as well you may come into the gallery now without appointment on thursdays fridays and saturdays from 11 to 3 to view our exhibition by lad Hinka. sorry <laughs> so um without further ado we're going to let sinclair talk and then you'll have an opportunity to ask any questions following thanks welcome Hello everyone and welcome to my artist talk. I'm Sinclair and I actually painted these hands <laughs> with my hands. Uh, I'm just going to start it off. I started off really good. I'm kind of a nervous public speaker, uh, but I want to thank you all seriously for coming. I really appreciate it. I see a lot of old friends and new people I haven't seen in a while. Like uh, the dog back there. <laughs> I've not seen it. Um, so basically, I kind of want to start off with an introduction, even though you guys know me, but it's kind of my backstory with art. You may have known me as a certain way for a long time, uh, but believe it or not, I am an artist. And uh, I, I grew up being an artist. Uh, we were in a family where we were given the opportunity to play three instruments, my siblings. Claire always painting his children. Oh, there you go. Oh. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah, much better. So I, I grew up in a creative family. Uh, my siblings and I, we both grew up, you know, playing three instruments. We always get the opportunity to paint and draw. Sometimes we would even do challenges. My brother right there, he'd win sometimes, not all the time. Um, <laughs> and I kept wanting to draw and paint, and a lot of my focus was on, you know, comic books and anime. And that really got me started because I loved, you know, the very dynamic, cool poses that these superheroes or cool characters would do. And I just thought it was cool if I could recreate it. So I grew up drawing, you know, the figure pretty much, which would eventually turn into kind of what I'm doing now, which is a lot of portraiture, focus on the human figure, hands as well, is what I've been doing mostly for the last three years, um, mostly because they're hard. And I like to challenge myself and like to be stressed. And, and it sounds like a joke, but really, I don't think my personal thing is I, I want to challenge myself every time because I don't paint every day. And when I do paint and draw, I want to make sure it's a challenging endeavor. Um, that being said, these hands were probably the most challenging thing that I've done up until this point because they're acrylic. And I am a watercolor artist and I paint on 8 by 10 pieces and these are 4 by 4 feet acrylic paintings that I had no idea how to paint with. You know what I'm saying? Since high school. <laughs> Since high school. <laughs> Miss Rumor signs over there, you know, who taught me acrylic. I forgot all of it. <laughs> over, t over 12 years, I, I totally forgot acrylic and going into these, I knew that I couldn't do a giant watercolor painting on time given because it's so difficult to do watercolor within a month. I had a month to do it. Um, so acrylic was the best chance. So for three weeks I tried to remember how to paint. Um, <laughs> this first painting here, which is the H of the word help, uh, I painted over five times and each time was actually worse until I figured it out. Uh, because it was so frustrating. But after I got the hang of the first one, uh, the other three came along pretty well. Um, and 
I guess I can get into why I chose why to do this, and it was a challenge. Um, I like to say yes to a challenge, and I don't challenge myself, if I'm being honest, enough when I do my own art, because I stay with what I'm comfortable, no matter how hard it might be to actually paint. And I think you guys have seen my watercolors. They are challenging to do, but no matter what I do, I get through them, I tear them up. If I want to start over, and I can start over. These had a deadline, and I'm not good at deadlines. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of head nods, that's good. Um, so getting back into it, I wanted to do these to challenge myself because I knew that it was going to be hard for me, and there was a chance that I might not be able to do it. I spent three weeks trying to relearn how to paint acrylic, and then four days not really sleeping on a lot of coffee and beer, um, <laughs> paint, painting these once I figured it out, and it ended up working out, and they've stayed up, you know, since we put them up, and I'm really grateful I had the opportunity to do that, so thank you guys for, you know, allowing me to do that. Um, the message is help. And it's sign language for those people that can't get their verbal or visual cues or screams for help out publicly, and it's inside. So their cries fall on deaf ears. So the next step is to silently say help in sign language. Um, I've been doing a lot of hand paintings because I find hands beautiful. I think sign language is beautiful. You're literally talking with motion. And that is, as a person who is in hearing impaired, insane to me. And we all understand. And we all can say we understand if we can learn it. You know, if everyone can, do the hand signs. H, E, yeah, you can look at them. L, T, it's help. So if you ever are dealing with something that is so hard that you can't put into words, Please, you know, think about this painting. I mean, not a lot of people talk about sign language or understand it, but there are other ways to ask for help if you need it, and this is just one of those ways. So that's why I chose to present this message the way I did. It's very literal. I'm a literal kind of guy. I don't kind of beat around the bush with my messages and my paintings. I think it's easier for me and for everyone else. Um, and so this is help. I'm supposed to talk about uh, questions and stuff. If you guys have questions, I'd be happy to answer. Raise your hand, feel comfortable, Spencer. Other than stress, what is something that augments your abilities to your art? Well, what do you mean by augments? What uh, enhances it, like what gets you going? You're like muse or inspiration other than what's stress. So Spencer's my brother and he's asking other than stress because he knows that painting stresses me out more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I love doing it. Uh, but what else enhances that besides the pressure is, is kind of that. The motivation. Getting it done and thinking that I might like it is one of my main motivations. Um, I had a teacher at LCC, Nancy, she's a drawing teacher and she said all it needs to do is look good at the end. That was how we got graded. Does it look good? And she'd tell us no if it didn't. And it kind of stuck with me because if you don't like what you're creating, if you don't like what you're putting out there, you're going to struggle a lot as an artist. And I'm already struggling enough creating it. I'd rather not struggle when I put it out there. So that's, I think, my biggest motivation is just make sure it looks good. Uh, but there's a lot of things in between that that kind of make it very difficult to get there. That's a good question, thank you. Let's read your signs, yes. <laughs> Do you think you'll continue with acrylic a little bit? I know most of your work is watercolor and it's amazing. That is a great question. Acrylic is my newest enemy um, <laughs> that I have. Uh, I have PTSD from working on it because I spent 10 years doing watercolor and it's very, you know, it's transparent layers, little by little. You have to wait for it to dry um, and that gives a break. A sense of a break. This was brutal 
and yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> I know it's acrylic and some people kind of look down on acrylic, but it's not watercolor, it's not oil, it's kind of an in-between. But it depends on what you make with it. And I, I definitely want to continue with acrylic on bigger pieces because it was fun in the end. In hindsight, which I think a lot of things are. Um, but yeah, I definitely will continue with acrylic. Well, it takes elements just fine. And you can do transparent acrylic circles. I learned that towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> when I was washing off my brushes, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, specifically for health, would you say that the pandemic has influenced your or like the message of health just because of mental health? I think, uh, did everyone hear the question? No, no. She asked if the pandemic has influenced the message of health or is that right? Um, I, I would say yes, because full disclosure, you know, I have my own mental health issues that I have to work on. This was a very personal painting for me, and being in the pandemic with everything going on, a lot of things changed, and a lot of things got tough. And so the, the pandemic in that way definitely influenced this piece a little more. The idea was actually sprung in mental health month this month, or this year. Um, does that answer the question? It kind of, it was, it was more personal for me to get this message out, because I know other people are dealing with it. For a, while. for a little bit, I saw him speaking up. We'll see him again. But yeah, it, it definitely it influenced me in a way because it was personal for me, and I, I, you know, I try to make my art personal so other people can attach to it as well. Because I'm kind of an emotional guy, and if other people can get emotional from my art or even think about stuff, that's all I can really ask for. So, yes, David Salzer. Hi, bud. Um, so two questions. One. Which one's your favorite of the of the four letters? And two, um, this seems like it seems pretty personal. So, it, was there like an event or a relationship with a friend or family member that served as an inspiration for this? That's a loaded question, and there's going to be a loaded answer. Uh, did everyone hear that question? The thank you, Lena. That's a good point. Uh, which one is my favorite, first of all? I'll answer that right off the bat. It's going to be the L um, because it has the coolest shapes in it. To me. That's about it. <laughs> but I do want to touch on that actually with the shapes. Is one of the ways that I figure out how to paint this picture, because I usually blend a lot in my watercolors, is I know color, and I know shape, and I know value, which are the basics. <laughs> Miss Rumor Sides can tell you. And if you know those, you can kind of figure out what you want to do with what you want to create. So I could not blend with uh, acrylic. So my next step was, and uh, Danielle, my fiance, can attest to this. I bought a Andy Warhol wig to wear to this thing. I ended up not doing it. Because <laughs> it's very pop artish, you know, the high contrast and everything in the shape. I almost did, though. You guys are lucky. Um, so these are the colors and the shapes that I ended up going with as a result of me not knowing how to paint with acrylic. And as a result of that, the hell is my favorite because it looks insane to me, and that might have been the one I looked at the longest when I was not sleeping. <laughs> what, was, what was your other The second one was, this seems pretty personal. Uh, so was there a certain event in your life or a relationship with a family member or friend that served as an inspiration for this? So, we can call it an inspiration. In the end, life has definitely granted me with events that have affected me to the point where I might even need to say help myself. And that being said, yes, absolutely. There, you know, my dad died when I was 11. Our dad. Um, and that kind of made me start thinking differently about life a lot and it pushed me towards visual arts because that's how I could emote. That's how I could deal. That's how I could get rid of whatever I was thinking that I couldn't deal with at the time. Um, that on top of any other heartbreaks, emotions, things that happen you know, to everyday life, I may not be able, I don't know if I would be able to deal with it if I didn't do art, to be honest with you. It's more of a therapy for me. 
and that's why I just kind of take it slow because I know I'm going to do it for the rest of my life because I'm sure life has other things to grant me that are going to, you know, kick my ass, which will help the art. <laughs> so, yeah. Here. Um, they're beautiful, first of all. Thank you. Um, just like you. Thank you. <laughs> How did you pick the colors for it? I've been waiting for someone to ask that question. It's a great question, Karen. Uh, so these these colors, I work a lot, when I paint with watercolors, I work with primary colors, two different sets. I work with a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red, and a warm and cool blue. And sometimes I pick some browns here and there. Um, for those of you who don't know, warm is more yellow and orange and red, and cool is more blue, purple, and violet and I work with the two different sets of the primary colors, and what I usually get out of that is a brown, a pink, a yellow, a blue, and a purple. And I knew that I love those colors when they come out in watercolor, so I wanted to, I, I mixed, I don't know how many different cups of paint to get the color palette that I want, um, but that was the influence on that. It's the colors that I create when I do watercolor because I don't pre-mix watercolor paints. I just kind of layer on top of the painting and the painting does what it does. This had to be more pre-planned. Uh, and that's where we get the yellows and the pinks and the purples. Very cool. Thanks for asking that. Super cool. Yeah. Have you ever done public artwork before? And if not, will you do plan on doing it again? Um, <laughs> deadlines. <laughs> deadlines, yeah. That's a good point. I have done a mural before, but it was on our own time, and it was my friend's design. It was never my own. I just helped paint it, uh, which kind of introduced me to larger scale pieces. Uh, and it was a giant wall, probably the length of this board right here and that board. And it was intense, and it was kind of grueling. So I really give respect to the other muralists that have been out here because it's insane. I don't understand it, and I don't like it. That being said, um, yeah, I would totally do it again because it's a challenge, and I like to get better at it. Plus, you know, you can always use the grid system to enlarge whatever you, whatever you want. It just depends on if you have the time, <laughs> period, uh, to do it. And, you know, you work at it. And, I, you know, I'm working my, my 9 to 5, so it's hard to, you know, do that and then go to a wall and be like, oh, let me just paint the Sistine Chapel. Um, it's a little hard, if, if that's not to me anyway. Um, but I'm also a very slow worker. But yes, I would absolutely do large scale public art again. Like, much later on. Like three years from now, once I get over this one. <laughs> Miss Reamer says. Are you settling back here or are you going back to New York? So I have, you know, that's an up in the air question <laughs> due to work. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, I've, I spent eight years in New York and I'm still working there, but I've had the, you know, it's been great living here for the last year and a half to see friends and family and be able to do this, because um, I wouldn't be able to do it if here, if I was in New York. Um, but in November, I have plans to go back, but then also come back, you know, sooner or later, depending if I quit to be an artist or, you know, quit to be an artist. <laughs> So yeah. Did you have a question, Ailey? I did. It was kind of answered. Um, but do you have any like upcoming projects we can look out for? Or I have loads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to be on the lookout, I think is in the nature of if you follow any of my artwork, because there are months where I don't post or do anything, and then I will do three projects in a row, and then you know another month off. Because watercolor to me is uh, stressful, but I, I have a lot of... My two primary ideas is I want to continue with the sign language and dive into the, you know, hearing impaired community. I actually want to donate these to a community around here when um, they're done being hung up and do portraits and do more um, hand signs and words and motion. So that's one of my plans for the next year. And then I have another one, which I took like a picture of every bust in the Metropolitan Museum, and it's a little info card, and so I've been waiting to do that one. Uh, but those are my next big projects that I think I'm gonna be working on. So I'm definitely gonna continue this and go into some other stuff. Mostly watercolor, not necessarily acrylic, and not necessarily public art. <laughs>
Yes, Brian. Walter's definitely in that lineup, right? Walter can definitely be painted. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he doesn't pay attention. Walter found Uh, any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Claire. Yeah, what's up, Mike? It's going to be a stupid question. But there are no stupid questions. Thank Haven't you. you heard? So, you've got three of them done and you're going to work on the bee. you got a fresh new canvas. <clears throat> Do you, did you start working on that and if something doesn't go right and you put it on the canvas, the work you do, do you have to say to yourself, I'm going ahead anyway? Or do you scratch it and bring another brand new canvas out? Option B, I'm a proponent for destroying work that you don't like if you create it. And I've ripped okay, so up many pieces. It's going up costly for you. Yeah, but you know, in the end, you know, if it's the cost of materials versus the cost of experience, I'll definitely always float towards the cost of experience because I don't see a point in finishing a piece that you know is going to fail because of mistakes that you know you've made. But if you rework what you've done or start from the beginning, that, you know, however much you spend on the materials to redo is worth every penny if you get a good penny out of it. Because in the end, it just has to be good. Yeah. And that's a good question. I like that. Because I destroy a lot of stuff. Hey, the baby had a question. <laughs> Nope. Yeah. And you're just dancing. Yeah. Hit me on the head. Yeah. Is it when you do it, do you do, you do like one at a time, sequentially, or in your mind, do you, you know, you have the idea, <clears throat> how do you approach it? So working on multiple pieces, uh, this first one I had to kind of get, there, there are maybe six colors in this, and this orange right here is the base color. So on all of them, after I started finishing this one, I had to finish the base color. But I like to work where everything's kind of updated at the same point. So then I would do this dark red, the purple, the yellow, and ending with the white, depending on all pieces. Uh, because, because they're four pieces together, you have to see how they're gonna work together in the end. And it's hard to see that if you're not working on them at the same time. Uh, it's difficult and it gets messy, yeah. um, but I think it turned out okay. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. It turned out great. Right, thanks. I'll be here all week. Um, closing statements. Any other questions? Alex Nelson, you got a question? I know you do. I just have a comment. Uh, just let me know whenever you need a new model. Um, <laughs> I need one right now. <laughs> awesome. Well, that kind of seems like, unless anyone has anything else, I really do appreciate you guys coming and asking me about my art and trying to understand it some more, because I'm trying to do the same thing. Um, so thank you all very much for coming. Thank you everyone for coming. Just one quick note. We have a survey that you can take and we'll have we have paper copies but you can always do it online too. We'd appreciate your feedback for these events. Um, and I'd like to thank our sponsor for this installation, Jay Puck, as well. So thank you all for coming. We hope to see you at another artist talk at the end of the month. Check out our website and come and visit us at the gallery. Have a good night. Woo!